Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. I want to do a little update on some bits and pieces and then talk about some of the more jovial things that the Eve devs have done with the Venture Vulture stuff. Lots of people have been asking about when uh, 3.2 ships will be available to get in game and how do you get them and that sort of stuff. There is going to be a flight ready sale uh, when 3.2 goes alive. But I'd advise asking to borrow someone else's in-game, someone else's prospector if you want to do mining, or wait until you can buy them with Alpha UBC, um, hopefully in 3.3. The prospector will be the loaner ship for the Orion, and some other ships might follow that as well with the prospector becoming the loaner ship for them. But at the moment, it's just the Orion and the Vulture that are confirmed. The next buyback tokens will be available on Monday, the 2nd of July, and after that, on October the 1st, 3.2 is currently in its first wave PTU, which is very much a testy patch. Um, lots of features, but lots of bugs. Mining certainly has potential to be pretty cool, actually. Check out my videos on patch notes and ship tours. I'll get some up on the mechanics as well. We're in a bit more stable and I can get some uh, good shots of them. So the main thing of this video is I want to talk about the Venture Vulture thing. So uh, Eve and the Venture, Star Citizen's Vulture, they both look similar. And obviously the Vulture was done much more recently. Um, so there has been some people accusing of copycatting and that sort of stuff, but that's very unlikely. Um, it's been very interesting to follow on Reddit and social media with a few fans either taking great offence uh, for some reason on both sides uh, and others completely dismissing it, them looking similar, and some just poking fun at it. The Eve guys put up a skin cell for the Venture recently, directly poking fun at the Vulture, and it's pretty funny. Love the Venture, enjoy mining and salvaging. Have we got a skin bundle for you? Head over to the New England store and pick up the Venture Capitalist skin bundle, which contains three Venture skins that are ideal for mining below the belt. Just beware of the sneaky Vultures attempting to swoop in and loot your assets. The best part of this skin bundle is that it won't cost you $120. You can get all three skins for just 120 plex. That's more than 50% off their total value when they're sold separately. Alternatively, as well, if you do feel like you'd like to support the continued development of New Eden, $120 will buy you the plex to run a mega subscription for more than six months, or buy a little over 36,500 ventures at current market price in Jita. That's a shitload of mining right there. I've never seen someone swear on a newsletter before. So this is one of the more lighthearted and funny things I've seen uh, in a, a game due to another game. And I think it's good for the Star Citizen community to, learn, to laugh at these things rather than take any form of offence by it. And uh, with that in mind, on the Star Citizen subreddit, there was a thread talking exactly about that and exactly about that Eve sale. Um, and there was some very, very positive, good comments on that. It was good to see. Eve community manager, CCP underscore Falcon, posted it's great to see that the vast majority of the comments in this thread are light-hearted and fun anyone who's been around eve and ccp for the crazy ride that we've had over the last decade and a half knows that we love to have a bit of fun with our community and we aren't afraid to get a little trolley at the same time i'm super glad that on both sides of the fence most people are having a bit of fun with the whole thing and taking it for what it is a laugh at the fact that art inspires art, and in the end, the interests of both communities and inspiration for both development studios are very similar. We all draw our interest in sci-fi and our aspirations for what our games should be, from the same experiences growing up and consuming the incredible wealth of sci-fi we've been privileged to enjoy since man first dreamt of traversing the stars. Star Citizen and Eve are both great projects with huge aspirations, so much so that while working on Eve, I'm also subscribed to the Robert Space Industries weekly newsletter, and I tend to tune in to Around the Verse whenever I get the spare time to do so. It's great to see how the project is coming along and how much support it has from its dedicated fan base. I've always been a huge sci-fi fan. That's what drew me into EVE Online. That's what's kept me interested in reading about the progress of Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Luckily, I've branched out from community work for CCP into narrative writing for the EVE universe too. So with a few books under my belt, it's also fantastic to read more about the origins of spaceships and technologies that go into breathing life into Star Citizen. One thing I I've learned when writing is that regardless of where you look, science fiction is a huge melting pot of a genre where you see inspiration cross the boundaries of IP in every direction. All it does is enrich the genre and bring more life to the narratives we craft and consume. 
I'm super interested to see what's next for both Star Citizen and EVE, and contrary to what some of the more vocal fans on both sides of the fence might think, over here in Reykjavik, we've got nothing but love for our fellow sci-fi developers, and continue to wish Cloud Imperium Games and Star Citizen's community nothing but fair skies and smooth sailing. I thought that was a pretty cool statement from CCP Falcon, which is why I wanted to do this video, but this makes me have even more hope for Star Citizen's various communities going forward. I know they occasionally get called toxic and whatever, um, a lot of that is clearly trolling or whatever, as Star Citizen's community is one of the better ones I've ever been in, and as they get older, they will get a bit of a thicker skin, like Eve's community, learn to laugh at yourselves, let things go, and don't take it all too seriously. With Star Citizen, I am letting the game speak for itself once it's finished, and in the meantime, I'm going to start analysing and helping to evolve game mechanics and features as they get implemented, which is what I wanted to do since I was interested in the project at the end of 2013. As we move forward with the patches coming out in 2018, and Star Citizen starts to deliver it on its major core mechanics, I am very excited to see what the game has to bring and what it has to offer. This month's featured spotlight is the Daymar Rally, and they're giving away a rally pack of a Tumbrel Cyclone and an Aegis Vulcan, which coincidentally is all the hardware you need to enter the rally. The Daymar Rally is an annual community organised event which is set to have its inaugural endurance race on the 27th of January 2019. There will be three divisions over a 300 kilometre course set on Crusader's Moon Daymar. It is an in-game event and I am very much up for these. A four-person crew can sign up their team now with a ground vehicle and support vehicle. More info, the sign up and complete rulebook can be found on daymarrally.com. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that rally pack though is to be subscribed to my channel and comment on any of my videos throughout June one per video. Each video gives you another chance to win. Also, I'm working with Shadow, which is a cloud-based subscription gaming PC service that gives you an alternative to upgrading, but also as a gaming PC anywhere. I'm trying to make the service as Star Citizen friendly as possible, but please check that out again in the description below if you're interested, and using the promo code BOARDGAMER will give you a discount too if you decide that you like it. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.